What's up guys? If you know me, welcome back. If you don't, my name is Matt. And today we're gonna talk about asking for feedback from your employees and automating responses to do that frequently. There are two ways to do it in Power Automate. We're gonna cover both of them and talk about the pros and cons of each. So the first step we're gonna show you is going into Power Automate and using the step send an email with options. Email is still a really great tool for communication and everybody uses it day to day. Um, and we wanna give a couple examples. If you're just looking to get a response from someone back, that's not important about the tracking data behind who responded to it or what time they responded. Um, you just wanna customize a response option and get the answer really quickly from them and maybe store it in a list somewhere. Since we do wanna actually record some of these responses today in a list, I have my SharePoint list set up. There's a company outing ideas list here that users could go into and submit a company outing at their business. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. You see that there's a title for maybe the suggestion or the outing idea, the day that they want it to happen and maybe a cost for that. So this is just a suggestion for a company outing maybe from an employee or somebody at the organization. So when a user puts in these things, we can just say that we wanna to go to the zoo. It's gonna cost some money. That's not really important how much. I mean, that's not a proponent of the request. And we're gonna pick a date and that's gonna kick off our first flow. So I'm gonna show you the flow next in Power Automate. So I have a flow in here called Company Event Responses. And again, these flows have the same exact trigger. So when an item is created in a list in this case. So once a user has submitted an idea to this list, it kicks off an email with options. You see it populates there right in my email already. But this is how it's configured here. So it's gonna be sent to me. It's got a subject line that I can put in some data from the list or the suggestion that the user submitted. And it has user options. So it can be a basic approve or deny um, if they're looking for an approval type situation. But I can add as much as I want here um, as far as options go. Again, if, it's, uh, if it needs to go to a holding pattern or a parking lot type scenario and I don't know exactly what call to make about this suggestion, um, you can do a variety of feedback by just putting additional options in here that will show up in that email. Um, and you can really customize the body of this email, put in more content from the list if the user provided something like the cost of the event or the date. Um, really anything that exists in that list can be injected into the email here to help the user respond to that request. Once the email has been sent, we can actually create an item in a response list that I also have added to the SharePoint list. So depending on the response and the option that that user selects, I can actually tie that to the title or another field in that response list and update that item with how the response was recorded. And this is essentially where our recorded responses go. So we can take a quick look at this email here in my Outlook. This is my custom email that I created. Some of the formatting will look different between Outlook application and the browser of Outlook Online. It looks really good in the browser application, I think. But here are my options to approve or deny. There are links that will update the rest of the flow. And the flow is waiting for me to respond to this email. So I think it waits up to about 30 days. Um, so again, if you're not really worried about these getting left in people's inboxes and they're gonna respond to them very quickly, um, this shouldn't be an issue since you have a month to respond to them. So once I've responded and I approve of this idea at the business, I actually get a little thank you message and a confirmation that the response has been re registered somewhere. If we go back into the response list here on my SharePoint site, we can see that the zoo outing has just been approved. So the response itself doesn't get tracked anywhere in Outlook or anything like that. It actually needs to be configured in the flow to put it somewhere back into SharePoint or another connection. So in fact, there is a template in here that's named after the send email with options that you could search for in Power Automate, or you feel free to pause the video at any time and recreate any of these steps if you need to. So the second option that we wanna show in this video to accomplish getting feedback from users is using approvals within Power Automate. We can do this by using the start and wait for approval step in the flow. This step is pretty beefed up and comes in handy when you wanna track and monitor approvals that you've been sent or completed or assigned. If your request needs to go to more than one person or in a certain sequence or order, it can be really useful for that. If your responders wanna include certain comments when they're replying to these requests, they can do that or maybe reassign it to somebody else and you can trust your users to manage their own approval task assignments in Office 365, um, then this is a really good step to use. So a little bit more about the approval connector. This step is actually creating a formalized approval that lives in your Office 365 environment. It's an actual thing and not just an email to respond to. So we're gonna use the same setup as before. We have two lists, which are the company outing ideas list and the response list that the response will end up getting stored into. So we're just gonna throw another idea in here. 
and we'll kick off another trigger for this flow. It's configured almost the exact same way, or at least has the same flow structure as the send an email with options approval. It starts with the same trigger when an item is created that's connected to our list for ideas. And then we actually search for an approvals step called start and wait for an approval. It's very similar to the send an email with options, but it's actually creating an approval that will end up sending a similar type of email. Um, we have a couple different approval types here. The one I have set up is everyone must approve, which means anybody that's in the assigned to field has to respond to this before it goes on to the next step. Um, there's a variety of options you can select here. You can just say, no matter how many people are in the assigned to field, I just want the first response that I get just to expedite the process or custom responses. Again, um, these are defaulted to approve or deny, but you could actually add other response types into that. But I recommend starting out of the box and doing simple yes, no, approve, deny when you uh, decide to start using this approval step. So you can assign it to as many people as you need to, again, either in a group or in a sequenced order. Um, and you can modify the email body or the details of the approval that will end up being in the email the same way as we did with the previous step. So the title, links to the item, certain data about the item can all go in this approval item. One thing I want to point out here is that there is a requester field that is optional on the approval step. So if you want to indicate who is sending this approval, um, you will be able to put in a certain name there if it's an individual or a group. And same as before, the final step, we have the outcome data of that approval going back into the new item or the new response item that we'll add to the responses list along with the rest of the data. So let's look at what this approval email looks like in our Outlook. I have a new one here from the one we just submitted. It's a little bit larger than the other one, but you can see all that custom email data is in there from the item. So I can review this item, I can check the, the link to the item and I can choose to either approve or reject it. And these are a little bit more dynamic in the email, so I can add my own comments. Those are optional if I want to, whether or not I'm approving or rejecting it. So we'll go ahead and approve this one. And it records when, we, when it was submitted and just some of the comments from my approval response. So you're probably wondering where is this approval in Office 365? We can go and take a look at that now. Even though you are answering the approval from the email, it actually something is going on behind the scenes. So we have an approvals tab up here in the Power Automate world. So whether or not you're actually authoring your own flows, you do have an approvals list where all of these things reside and you can approve or reject them from right within Power Automate here. It has some useful tabs to say what's outstanding or what do I need to respond to right now based off of the approvals that have been sent to me. I can look at approvals that I've sent to other people if I'm creating the flows and asking for feedback or responses, and then a history also just to see what I've responded to over the course of my time at the company. So if you're not using Power Automate, there's another way you can get to your approvals. You can actually go to Teams, and within Teams, you can add the app for approvals. It's not automatically there on the sidebar, but you can click to activate it to add it to your sidebar, and that app will show you the rest of the approvals in a little bit cleaner way, a little bit more co colorful, um, along with some other approvals that you, styles you may be sent. So clearly there's a pretty big difference between the email responses and starting approval steps in Power Automate, whereas sending an email doesn't really create anything tangible in the environment. It's just a way for users to quick get an email and respond to it. But if they lose that email, um, if they forget about it, it's really hard to go look for in Outlook, whereas the start and wait for an approval gives them an actual task. We find that a lot of users that end up using approvals in the Office 365 space love that they have all that content and data already there and tracked, so they don't really need to worry about it in SharePoint. So it just depends on whether you prefer to use lists or approvals right out of the box to monitor this type of content. So all of this is adding up to the ultimate question, when do we use one over the other? So you guys have already seen that each email looks a little bit different in Outlook, it has the same type of content depending on how you configure it, but they have different looks and feels. So that's the first thing. You've seen that you can do a lot more with the response with the approval step than you can with the sending email with options step. The sending an email with options step is a lot more limiting because the users can only respond to it directly from that email. Whereas in the approval step, the users can go to a variety of places to go find those and answer them. All right, well, that's all I have to show you guys today. I'm gonna sign off. Thanks for tuning in. Put any questions or comments you have down below. Don't forget to subscribe and like and follow us for more content.